several weeks ago. Uh, Mr. Henry Rodriguez gave me a call on a weekend and said that he had a, a couple of victims of a scam that may be interested in give, giving us some information. We dispatched a deputy out and took the report, and sure enough, there was a, it, it, it appeared to be, you know, where they when they say where there's smoke, there's fire. There was a whole lot of smoke, and we've found some fire as a result of this as well. Uh, but what we can tell you about this case uh, at this point is we've got some footage that we want to show you from some of the suspects, one of the suspects in this case, as well as we're going to show you a mugshot for a suspect that remains at large and then tell you exactly what it is that they're suspected of. That suspect that you see there is Miguel Angel Cuellar Lopez, 57 years old. And then in a little bit, we'll toggle over. There's his mugshot. Theft, 2500 to 30000 two times. State jail felony. Theft, 30000 to 150 third degree felony. Those are just the first of many charges to come with these guys. This is his son, Miguel Angel Cuellar Martinez uh, Jr., I believe, 32 years of age. Same charges for him. He remains at large. Um, at present, we believe he may actually have gone to Mexico. I don't know that he fled to Mexico so much as it was vacation time and he went. Uh, my understanding is, is from what we're gathering in this case, this guy here has an, a care in the world. He has no worries in the world. Uh, making plenty of money, and I'll tell you what some of the dollar amounts are that these two suspects have made off the backs of these victims that, that by all accounts, work very, very hard. So these two suspects uh, operated, operated a business uh, called Tu Trailita, uh, which is a food truck company. They make food trailers, uh, taco trailers, whatever you want to call these trailers, that's what they did. And what they did was they preyed upon folks that just really wanted to, to, to make an honest living, much like the, the victim that you'll be hearing from here in just a few. These are just business people that, that you know, either have a work visa or have a business and they were looking to invest in something that they could use to sustain their families. Uh, and th these folks, these suspects here, thus far, uh, we're at about 28 different victims and counting. Uh, we say and counting because, again, we're, our hope is that once we put this out through you all, there'll be more victims coming forward. Uh, literally on a daily basis, before we even went public with this, the deputy or the investigators handling the case are getting about anywhere from three to five phone calls from new victims every day. So again, we're hoping that the coverage you all provide uh, will, will prompt more people to come forward. Some of the excuses that we've heard thus far for people not coming forward have been, well, I, I'm hoping that they'll still come through with the product. That's why I haven't said anything. Well, we can tell you if, you're, if these guys have any of your money and you're waiting for this product, they are not in the business. They're not in a legitimate business. You're not going to get your product. And so we would rather that you call us, 210-335-6000, and we'll take your report and we'll begin the process of, of trying to get you some, some form of justice. Um, so these folks, what they would do is they would take down payments uh, for a food truck, and they would let people go so far as to pick out the food truck that you want and what are the features that you want, what type of sink, what type of ovens, that, what type of features would you want on it. And then the story quickly became, well, we need more money. We've gotten to a certain point on your trailer, but we need more money to get to the next point. And we need more money for this, and we need more money for that. Well, long story short, they never would produce these trailers for these folks. And uh, so we've got, out of those 28 victims, we've got people that have been milked out of anywhere from $2,000 upwards of $30,000 with, with some of them. But again, I, it wouldn't surprise me to hear more victims come forward after today uh, with even more outrageous tales. Uh, these people are quite intimidating. Um, you know, too, right now it's too early to tell if there's any sort of uh, organized crime component to this. But again, with the dollar amounts, that we're talking about, it wouldn't surprise me to find out that there's some sort of organized crime component behind this all. Uh, all said and done, right now, there's about $186,000 that they've taken from the various victims to this point. But again, I'm expecting that, that number to, to continue to climb. Uh, let me go ahead and introduce uh, Mr. Henry Rodriguez from LULAC, uh, Concilio Zapatista, and then I'll come up and I'll do the same uh, detail in Spanish for you shortly. Mr. Henry. Thank you very much. Um, our job is to see that people get justice, and as everybody knows. My name is Henry Rodriguez. I'm the executive director for Lula Concilio Pal Zapatista, my president here, Linda Alfaro, and, of course, one of the victims. Uh, let me just say that uh, it is truly sad that these people, some of them come from, yeah, from other countries. Some of them live here in this country. And, but every, we, as we know, food trailers can turn a good profit if you work them right. Very good profits. 
And these people have invested their life savings, some of them, and to know, just to have it take them, being scammed by someone. So uh, we are very appreciative of the sheriff's department. Once I called the sheriff and uh, immediately sent a couple of investigators and they started the process and our job is to stay out of the way of what the, poli the police work that they do. They do very well, we're very proud of our sheriff and we just want to make sure that uh, we uh, do whatever it is that we can for these people. I don't know what else, but one thing is for sure, we want justice for them. And as a responsible organization that we are, we'll stay on top of it. And people can, again, like the sheriff said, they should come forward if they, have been, they feel they have been scammed. You know, we, we depend much on the media to come and, and, and report all these things. And hopefully, when they are watching at home and say, that happened to me, so go ahead and step forward. We cannot emphasize that enough. We, uh, we have... Um, been working with some other people that uh, have been very helpful, like our, one, one of our uh, um, legal counsels. But again, we leave up the police work to the sheriff's department who does a very good job. And with that, I'll just move out of the way. Thank you so much. Um, so look, you know, a lot of the political rhetoric that we're seeing flying around right now is uh, folks that are vilifying uh, immigrants that are coming here. But I can tell you, having met uh, the, those in this case that are that are dealing with this as victims, uh, these are folks that are not here looking for a handout. They they want the American dream for sure, but they're willing to work for it. They're willing to put in the overtime for it, and they're willing to invest their hard-earned money to obtain that the right to to get that that American dream. You know, there's an old saying that my dad uh, still you know says to this day: "No quiero que me den, solamente que me pongan donde hay." And these people personify that. Uh, the saying is, I don't want anybody to give me anything. Just put me where the opportunity exists, and I'll get it for myself. And that's what these people are looking to do. Uh, and unfortunately, they meet with these predators that, that are just looking to make a buck off of their hard-earned uh, work. And so while it is our hope that we'll at some point get them at least some of their money back, uh, at the very least that we can do is bring these guys to justice and any others like them contemplating similar activity to let them know that the sheriff's office is cracking down on this and we're not tolerating it. The reason that we, that we chose to come forward with this at this point uh, is because, well, it's several fold. Uh, you know, we just didn't want these people to, to be out continuing to victimize people while we were working this case. Not to mention, as, as we're learning more about this food truck business, my understanding is that nationally, San Antonio is known as the place to go if you want to get a food truck made, uh, built. And I, the last thing that I need is people coming from across the country coming here thinking that they're gonna they're coming to this hotbed of activity and then getting ripped off because of some you know guys like this and so we wanted to make sure that we ripped the rip the cover off of it let the world know that this is going on and let people know that this is not going to be tolerated not in Bear County uh, esta tarde nosotros uh, o oh, anoche nosotros arrestamos al sospechoso que ustedes vi vieron el video Miguel Ángel Cuellar López 57 años de edad Y él y su hijo, Miguel Ángel Cuellar Martínez, 32 años de edad, ellos tenían un negocio que se llama Mi tra o Tu Trailita, donde ellos, uh, se supone que ellos tenían el negocio donde uno que quería empezar un negocio de, de, de comida, podían venir con ellos, podían ordenar uh, un, una traila uh, con, con diferentes cosas que pueden trabajar en este negocio, Y estos sospechosos realmente nomás solamente les quitaron el dinero. Empezaban con, con un pago de dos mil, tres mil dólares para empezar el trabajo. Ya después de eso, miren, necesitamos más dinero para, para hacer más trabajo en la trela. Necesitamos más, más, más dinero, más dinero. Y entre más dinero que les quitaban, menos trabajo que hacían. Entonces ya las víctimas no teniendo otro recurso que venir con nosotros y dar la queja, Nosotros ahorita tenemos cuando menos 28 familias que, que uh, han dado dinero entre 2,000 y, y uh, 30,000 dólares y no se han juntado con, con ninguna traela para, para su negocio. Entonces, para nosotros, arrestamos ya al, al padre de 57 años de edad, pero el que todavía se busca es el hijo este de 32 años de edad. Se piensa que él ya fue para México uh, pero no se piensa ahorita que él huyó a México, sino que uh, fue de, de vacaciones con su familia. 
ya con el dinero que él que les quitó a las víctimas, él ya está ya bien pasándosela bien padre en México en sus vacaciones, pero ya cuando regrese, nosotros ojalá lo vamos a arrestar cuando, cuando tengamos uh, oportunidad. Ahora quiero invitar a, a una de nuestras víctimas que puede hablar con ustedes. Uh, permit, ¿Me permite su nombre? Carol Rivera. Carol Rivera. Carol Rivera. Ahorita el, 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 ella va, va, a, va a darles comentos. Sí, buenas tardes. Uh, primeramente, ¿verdad? En nombre de todas las víctimas, uh, yo también soy una. Quiero agradecerle, ¿verdad?, al Sheriff Salazar porque desde el momento uno que nos comunicamos con el señor Henry y él nos se puso la orden a tratar, ¿verdad?, de ayudarnos y nos dijo que no tuviéramos miedo, que él iba a ayudarnos, ¿verdad? Obviamente uno como comunidad hispana pues tiene miedo, pero le queremos agradecer que no va ni un mes y ya hay arrestados, ¿verdad?, entonces, en nombre de todas las víctimas, solo queremos justicia, ya no queremos trailas, no queremos nada. Queremos nuestro dinero, si fuera posible, pero si no, pues al menos que ellos ya no sigan estafando a nadie más. Gracias. So, um, I'll open it up to whatever questions you all might have. Sure, how yes, much, sir. How many uh, dollars total across all the victims we know about? Well, all said and done, we're looking at about 28 victims total thus far. Um, to the tune of about 100, all cumulatively about $186,000 that we know of at this point. Sí, uh, cuando menos uh, 28 víctimas y 186 uh, mil dólares que, que en, entre todos han perdido. Pero ya, se, ya para mí que ya ese, ese, ese número va a incrementar ya con más víctimas viendo esto y no nos aqueja. Bueno, sí les, aunque no les puedo dar uh, nombres, sí es posible que va a haber más arrestos de este caso. Entonces, si hay alguien más allá que piensan que posiblemente van a, vayan a ser arrestados, uh, será mejor para ellos llamarnos a nosotros, 335-6000, y que se hagan testigos antes de ser sospechosos. Y, y ahí podemos hablar. Um, I can tell you, and ahorita les doy esto en español también, Uh, I can tell you that I think what these guys capitalized upon is a couple things. Culturally, I think that they, they bet on the fact that a lot of these folks being immigrants were too afraid of law enforcement to come forward and give us this information. They felt they were going to be deported. As, as soon as they came to give us the information, we were going to arrest them and deport them. Nothing could be further from the truth. As, as, the, as a crime victim, uh, you have certain rights under the law. And if you are a victim of a crime or a witness to a crime, We want you to feel comfortable giving us a call. Uh, esto, lo que, lo que yo pienso de estos dos sospechosos es que ellos abusaron de estas víctimas en varias veces, eh, varias maneras, digo. Ellos se aparentan, para mí, yo pienso que ellos uh, se tomaron la ventaja de, de las, las víctimas que no iban a hacer la queja por su estatus su migratorio. Pero para mí, yo les puedo decir con toda confianza para, a la comunidad que si son testigos o víctimas de un delito, aunque no sean, aunque sean indocumentados, en, 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 las, las víctimas estas son, son gente documentada, pero hasta las personas indocumentadas se pueden sentir confortables dándonos la queja y no van a ser reportados a causa de eso. Como víctima o, delito, o, o, o testigo a un delito, tienen derechos y van a ser protegidos. No, pues ya sé que, que la, esas dos agencias nos han dado información, pero esta agencia se va a encargar de la mayoría de este, de este caso. Trailers. They're trailers. They did. It looked like they rented a chunk of a parking lot from, a, it was a used car dealership, right? Mm -hmm. It was a used car dealership, a legitimate used car dealership, but they subleased a, a chunk of their parking lot. It was over here near 35 Division area, off of the, off of the highway. Um, what's that? The 1106 Hildebrand. Okay. Did, they, did they, like, do something to attract people? Did they, like, focus on a certain type of individual? And, like, well, I think... On, I, get them on Facebook? Or how, how did they get the business? I think it was word of mouth, right? A lot of word of mouth. That they, they just knew that there, there's people that, that, that word would travel. There's a publication out there. Okay. And they, they came from Tennessee, Alabama, and other, other places okay. as well. Yeah, so, there, so there's, like, we even found in our research, uh, there's a national publication that actually did an article on Tutralita 
uh, praising the, the son that's still at large. He did an at-length interview talking about his business model and how much of a great businessman that he is. But again, I don't know that these guys ever actually built a single trailer. I think they were just in the business of ripping people off is, is what it was. What name were they using? Tu Trailita. Your trailer. Uh, but Tu Trailita is the name of the, the business. Bueno, ellos iban, uh, eh, eh, estaban rentando las, los, las propiedades que nosotros nos, nos hemos encontrado. Pero nosotros uh, nos interesa agarrar, uh, pues, obviamente alcanzar la justicia para las víctimas. Si podemos recoger la, el dinero, también será mejor. Pero ahorita estamos en eso, tratando de ver dónde escondieron el dinero esto. Si, el, estos, si todavía lo tienen. Sí, nosotros tenemos víctimas en, en otras partes del, del país donde ellos viven en otros estados, pero compraron, uh, hicieron las, las, uh, las compras por medio de internet. Entonces, uh, también estamos comunicándonos con esas, esas víctimas. ¿Y si hace poco para las personas que están esperando su tarjeta, la van a recibir? Nunca la van a recibir. Uh, obviamente, estos sospechosos no están en este negocio realmente. Ellos no hacen estas, estas trailas y, y es más, ya los arrestamos. Entonces, aunque un, una víctima quisiera recogerse, uh, uh, recoger su trela, no la van a, no la van a, uh, no lo van a lograr. Entonces, que nos hablen al 210-335-6000. Sorry, you're... Uh, can you say that in English? Uh, talking about, uh, sure. Uh, that there are other uh, victims outside uh, Absolutely. And We... also, uh, people who had made orders and stuff. They don't have any hope of getting no, look, yeah, absolutely. We're dealing with victims from other parts of the country. Uh, they're, they come from other states. Uh, again, they heard about it online. They saw it in the advertisements. They saw the mag magazine articles, and, and it attracted them. Again, I think that San Antonio is known nationally as being a hotbed of manufacture for, for taco trucks or, or food trucks. Um, with that being said, these suspects are not legit by any stretch of the imagination. And so if you're out there as a victim and you're hoping, waiting that maybe they'll call, maybe today's I get the day I get my trailer, it's not going to happen. And I, I hate to be the one that dashes your hopes, but these guys aren't actually doing that. And so if you are a victim or you suspect you're a victim, call us, 210-335-6000. So the different properties that they said that they were renting these properties where they were supposedly making their business, uh, are they still there? Are they not there? No, they, well, that was one of the big indicators for the victims is they were going back and forth with these guys, giving them more money, saying, where's my stuff? Where's my trailer? Where's my trailer? And then all of a sudden they showed up at the lot. Everything's gone. There's no inventory and the gate's locked. So at that point they knew they'd been had. So there has not been any type of trailer made or anything like that? Not to my knowledge, at least not to any of these victims here. Now, I mean, if, if, if by some chance they manufactured a trailer years back and there's somebody that's happy with the product that they got then that's great for them but as far as these victims here they've never recovered a trailer so right now all the victims and they're not going to get anything no they're not going to get anything and unfortunately there's even been victims in this case that brought trailers to these guys and then these guys went and sold it out from under them uh without their without the permission they were fixing somebody's trailer and then sold it to somebody else without telling him and you said that the, the person that you guys are uh, looking for he might be in Mexico. The son, this guy, mm -hmm. he might, he's probably in Mexico. Uh, bueno, es, es, es algo que, que ahorita estamos trabajando en eso. Pero para nosotros, uh, ojalá y él se va, uh, él va a regresar a los Estados Unidos y ya con eso lo vamos a arrestar. Bueno, uno de, una de las víctimas les trajo una traila para arreglársela, uh, según, él, según ellos. Y él, sin, sin que él supiera, la vendieron a otra persona, sin papeles y nada, nomás la vendieron. Y luego ahí uh, estuvo dificultoso para juntarse con su trela, pero ya en es, estos, en, en, en lo que sea, ellos, ellos hacen el dinero. No, I think that they, I think at some points SAPD had some case numbers associated with information reports that they'd taken, but at this point we're running point on it and we're, we're gathering that information from them. They're, they've been cooperative with us, of course. Have you guys been made any contact with any type of authority in Mexico? I, to my, I haven't, but I, I believe that was one of the, the things on our checklist that our investigators had to do, so I wouldn't be surprised if they have by now. Sí, mira, esta gente, ahorita en las, en las noticias hay políticos que quieren uh, decir muchas cosas de los, los inmigrantes, que solamente vienen para acá para, para cometer uh, 
uh, delitos para, para hacer cosas uh, contra la ley. Pero estas personas, la mayoría de, las, de los inmigrantes que vienen para acá solamente quieren trabajar. Ellos no quieren estar aquí, quieren mantener a sus familias en, en sus países, pero no pueden, no hay oportunidades allá. Entonces vienen para acá, trabajan duro para poder mantener sus, a sus familias allá y ya juntándose con, con personas así que solamente abusan de ellos, toman la ventaja de ellos, les quitan el dinero, que ellos trabajaron bien duro para, para, para ese dinero, por eso les queremos dar la justicia a esas víctimas. Absolutely. Anybody that may have been victim to these guys or, or any sort of similar type operation, um, give us a call, 210-335-6000. Uh, or you can also email us at bcsotips at bear.org. And again, that goes, if you happen to watch this in another part of the country and you know these guys, you did some business with them on, online, call us. We can still try to get you some justice, uh, you know, based upon that. Can I make comments? Now? Absolutely, sir. Please. Primeramente, una vez más, las gracias a los medios de comunicación. Déjenme decirles, nosotros como organización que le ayudamos a toda la gente que podemos, inclusive a los inmigrantes. Nuestra historia o nuestro, lo, que, lo que sabemos, cada persona que viene de otro país tiene un orgullo tremendo de ser de donde es, como cualquier otro. Que las gentes que, que viven aquí, que han nacido aquí, tienen mucho orgullo de ser americanos, ¿verdad? Pero a veces en su país no se puede, no se puede vivir. Tienen muchos problemas con las pandillas, con esto y lo otro, el gobierno corrupto. Así es que, ¿qué otra, ¿qué otra cosa tienen sino que venir aquí a la, a la tierra de oportunidad? Entonces, estas personas vienen y vienen simplemente a trabajar. Es la gente más trabajadora que puede haber, verdaderamente. Ya se tiran haciendo pozos, los que le, 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 le sacan haciendo techos en el solazo, en los campos de agricultura, todo eso hacen. Trabajos que mucha gente aquí no los quiere, no los quiere hacer y no, no los va a hacer. Así es que, pero es la gente que se le, muchas veces se le trata más mal que a nadie, pero son trabajadores y con el tiempo se superan porque eso vinieron a triunfar en este país y, a, y a, como esta gente de las trailitas, si no se les diera pasado eso, al rato están viviendo una vida buena y dándole dinero al gobierno como todos los demás y quizá más que muchos otros. Así es que uh, hay que ver esas cosas como son. Y, y nosotros como organización, que en eso estamos siempre, eh, siempre lo hemos visto como una cosa que tenemos un orgullo, que nuestra gente es la más trabajadora que puede haber. Así es que les damos las gracias por estar aquí, queremos que pasen la palabra. Tienen pre preguntas, ya saben, estamos para servir a nuestra comunidad como siempre lo hemos estado. Gracias. Okay, if there are no, no other questions, we'll, we'll wrap it up. I appreciate y'all joining us. Dígame. Okay, let me tell you what, how it came about. There's a gentleman that has a, a company called Cool Components, and he's from Mexico, and he made a good, he's making a good life. He employs many people. He went through a lot of, you know, hardships, and his name is Ernesto Gomez. And Ernesto has, at one time, we went, oh, about 10 years ago, We went to uh, before uh, ACOG, and they didn't want to give them a contract for weatherization. And there was two other companies, and I'm going to say that's what it was. There was two Anglo companies that did not qualify, but yet they were giving them those con lucrative com uh, contracts. Well, we, we went and, and we fought for this man, and we came out ahead, and he got those contracts, and today he's very appreciative. Well, he's the one that knows uh, Miss Carol here and knows some of the people, and he's the one that called me. And he said, Henry, you know, this is lo que está pasando. This is what's happening. And, and that's how I, I, I became aware. And his sister has a, a, has a restaurant also from Mexico, <coughs> nice restaurant called Fajita Taco Place on West Thompson, and she has two more. This pe these are industrious people that came very, and, and went through hardships, but somehow, They made it. And so we, ha we had a meeting there. The Church Salazar sent a couple of his investigators, and they gave him the, the report on what happened, okay? Thank you. Monday? 
¿Con cuántas las que llegaron ahí? No me acuerdo cuántas Como eran. Como seis o siete, siete personas familias. familias. Ajá, ese día hablamos con ellos y otra cosa les inculcamos, que tuvieran paciencia, que por favor, y ellos estaban, ya querían hacer un, una conferencia de prensa, digo, el, el, con su sabiduría, el, el, algo así, el sheriff aquí, me dijo, dígale que se calmen, por favor, vamos a hacer esto uh, como debe de ser. Y tenemos que poner la confianza en las personas que verdaderamente, verdaderamente saben cómo tratar esto, es, estas situaciones. Y es lo que pasó. Gracias. Sí, esa es la... Tienen TikTok, uh, Facebook, Instagram. De hecho, habían hecho unos videos hace poco. El dueño de tu trailita, el señor um, al que están buscando. Yeah. El señor Cuellar uh, hizo unos videos los cuales le mandé yo también al, al, al investigador. Donde es como... Él estaba tratando de ofrecerme un trato. Quería 18 mil dólares más y que él me iba a poner a vender la traila porque yo le di 10 mil dólares al señor. Entonces, él quería 18 mil dólares más, poner a vender la traila y que después me iba a dar el dinero, los 28 mil dólares. Entonces, él quería robarse 18 mil dólares más. Gracias, guys. Gracias, guys. Gracias. 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 Gracias